with me here uh, on the other end again of a uh, yet another Skype connection. I've been doing a lot of these lately. It is uh, Rakesh Dawan, and uh, we are going to talk about his company, Falco E-Motors, and uh, what uh, kind of interesting and exciting work uh, they've been up to with respect to electric bicycle motors. So, uh, Rakesh, uh, welcome to EV World. Oh, thank you so much, Bill. It's, it's a pleasure to, to talk to you. Hey, I, I, I have, and I think, as I mentioned earlier, I think we may have a distant connection here in that in my garage over here about 25 feet from where I'm seated is a Wavecrest Tidal Force M750 electric bike prototype. <laughs> That that is uh, you know uh, really uh, uh, a treasure to cherish. It it is you know what and I've had that thing for going on. It's got to be at least a decade, and it still works great. So that I think that's a lot to say about the the technology, and uh, also those nickel metal hydride batteries. But I got to tell you. The bike is really heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, you know, at, at, at that time, you know, we had no clue about uh, what we were doing. You know, it was uh, something fun to do. We had to prove our technology. Right. So that so the easiest thing to do was on a bicycle. We had uh, uh, we we were not really after the electric bicycle market. Right. right. Well, let, let's sort of, let's sort of back up and sort of bring people kind of up to speed. First of all. Maybe give us a sense of who who the heck was Wavecrest and what was your role there? Well, see, uh, so Wavecrest really was the brainchild of uh, Boris and uh, Alex, uh, Boris Maslov and uh, uh, two scientists, two Russian scientists. Uh, and, uh, and they had uh, invented the seven-phase uh, technology. Okay. Brushless. And uh, they were not motor people, but they were uh, creative people. They were very inventive people. And then they got funding from Alan Anderson, who was very intrigued by the, by the new motor technology. Right. And their backgrounds. Right. Yep. So, so they had, uh, they, they, they started to put a team together. They had a great team uh, starting up. Uh, they had some great engineers working for them. Uh, and uh, they begin to uh, crystallize their concept into more refined uh, a specimen, you know, more something which they could sell, something which they could uh, actually uh, sell to uh, in the automotive world, sell in various different markets. Right, right. So I think I was, I was employee number 22 or something. I was uh, hired sometime in December of 2001. Okay. And uh, and I started there as a power electronics engineer. And uh, so one of the things was that they had no uh, manufacturing background or manufacturability of it. So essentially, and also they were lacking in hardware implementation of it. So uh, And then the engineers who came after me, we had some brilliant engineers who worked with me. Uh, there was uh, one great software engineer, uh, uh, Bart. Who, who was instrumental in really making that motor sing from software standpoint. And there was Farhad Habibi, who was instrumental in being able to uh, make things work mechanically. With Mark Benz, a lot of great people who worked on that motor. And we brought it to a point where it could be manufactured in, in, in large quantities. Okay. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so that was, uh, that was a lot of fun to do. Yeah, well, I guess the original goal, I think, if I remember correctly, was that they wanted to uh, basically sell this motor as a, a wheel or a hub motor uh, into the the auto industry for electric vehicles, if I recall correctly. And the the bicycle phase of it, the tidal force phase of this, um, was actually a, sort of an interim step to get them some of the cash flow going so that they could focus on on the uh, the auto side of this is that correct yeah I think they they were really uh, there, there was a confusing uh, there was a confusing uh, mandate from the top which I think was a lot to do with the fate of the company uh, 
So uh, they wanted to be an intellectual property company and they yeah. wanted to have a lot of patents and they wanted to sell the, sell the technology. At the same time, they were, of course, the pressures of reality is how do you generate serious cash flow? Yeah. Now, what can you do? So a lot of it was, you know, uh, try to commercialize the bicycle side of things. Yeah. And I think that was a mistake uh, because uh, uh, nobody truly understood the electric bicycle market in the U.S. It is very small, very fragmented, and at that time it was even worse. So. Yeah, it was even worse. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so these, uh, and they had no idea about Europe and they never attempted to launch in Europe, which was another big mistake. So, so from a standpoint of uh, launching an electric bicycle business, it was a major fiasco because uh, it was very poorly launched, very poorly planned, and nobody really had an idea about the market. Yeah, yeah. So, and even if we had great opportunities, like we had, uh, you know, the Excel group uh, came right to our door and said, develop a motor. We developed the motor for them, developed the technology for them. At the end of the day, Wavecrest just gave the technology to them for free when they closed their doors. Yeah. Well, there was a brief period, I think, when, when the company started shutting, shutting its doors that they did some kind of a licensing agreement with a, with a French firm and, and it... And I think that for a period of time, that French firm um, used that technology on some product. I don't know whatever, you know, whatever happened to it at that point. Yeah, I mean, there was there was uh, the Tidal Force business was sold to Matra. Okay. And there was a public announcement on it, and uh, they used it for some time. Uh, but at the end of the day, I believe they wanted to uh, wanted to move everything to France. They had manufacturing facility in China. But at the end of the day, wanted to move to France, and I think the dynamics of the European business have have really changed quite a bit in the last uh, six years. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. So a, Go ahead. Yeah. So as a result, I think uh, they have taken a uh, they they have taken a very uh, different direction than they had before. Okay. Well, look. So so that's where the company was. Now let's sort of pick it up. At what point does uh, Redcash decide that I am going to launch Falco e motors and uh, bring, kind of bring us up to speed where you are today. Well, I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, if you recall, uh, after Wavecrest, uh, we, I had founded the company called Electric Motion Systems. And we had launched E plus Electric Bike, which was really next generation to Tidal Force. Okay. And uh, we had. Uh, we had uh, a great success in terms of product development, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, 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 setting a great manufacturing setup in a supply chain. Uh, we had some very key partners. So we did all that successfully. And uh, again, you know, our, there we failed on the marketing side because we were too much focused in the U.S. market. And we had, uh, uh, and we had, uh, uh, we we were not uh, very active in Europe market, right? And as a result, uh, uh, I, I guess uh, the product uh, failed to take off in a big way in in the U.S. market. You're talking about 2008 launch. Okay. Right, so it was. It is still a brilliant. I think we sold, uh, you know, a few thousand units in the U.S. market, but uh, it was not enough to be able to support, yeah. uh, you know, product and development effort in the U.S. You know, so uh, so after uh, you know uh, electric motion systems, I basically started Falco e motors, and we set up our uh, research and development uh, in in India. Okay, and uh, we set up our uh, manufacturing in India. Uh, you know, we uh, basically we have done. You know, I have I have set up uh, uh, three manufacturings in uh, uh, in in, in uh, China, and uh, with with RMB, uh, you know, uh, we'll appreciate uh, at some point of time. You know, China is now the second largest economy in the world. Yeah. So China is, in my opinion, no longer economical. Uh, to be able to do uh, 
uh, cost-effective manufacturing. Oh, really? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. It, it is, and it is, it is a matter of time before uh, China is forced to totally make RMB free, uh, so that uh, you know it it will appreciate substantially against the dollar. Okay. You know, it's 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 artificially being controlled, yeah. and is actually hurting uh, the competitiveness of the rest of the world. Okay, so they're right. key, they're keeping basically the the uh, the currency, the yuan or the renminbi, um, what artificially low compared to to other currencies. Yes, and that of course yeah. then stimulates trade, you know, and they get to sell more product and keep people employed and, and so on. So, but at some time, that that starts to catch up with them then. But it has to catch up because the 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 demand for imported goods in China is is quite extensive okay and so the demand for foreign currencies is huge you know demand for dollars demand for euro is huge so these currencies should appreciate automatically if they had freely traded currency yeah right okay. and they are doing it slowly uh, because they are they are afraid of uh, of uh, uh, you know uh, 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 the consequences which they may not understand Right, but it is it is it is it is at some point of time that reality has to come into place. Okay, and uh, so so I think uh, at that point of time, of course, uh, you know, even uh, Mexico becomes a much more attractive destination for manufacturing. Uh, okay, than, than, uh, <laughs> so we're making the loop and coming back, and maybe at some point it ends up back in the United States, huh? Yeah, well, I mean, the United States, you know, our evaluation has been that the United States remains a very effective manufacturing place. For many products, you know, uh, I wouldn't want to manufacture spoons here, but uh, there is still substantial amount of economy of scale here which we can exploit, uh, which uh, don't exist in 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 uh, other countries. Yeah. Well, so let's talk about. So you've got uh, the potential to do things in India. You've done it already. Now you're looking and you have shifted. What the R and D and manufacturing part of this is now in India. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, uh, and and the technology we 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 developed uh, essentially we wanted to do you know wanted to do everything from a clean slate. Okay. And we said, what is it that really could uh, could differentiate from what we have done in the past? So we uh, we we researched and 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 uh, in in direct drive motors in direct drive motors. We uh, and and again, you know, direct drive motors with the respect of electric bicycles. Yes, I have. I I mean, we, we don't have interest in in using these for uh, higher power applications. Right. Right. Well, we have, particularly if you're talking about India, I mean, it seems to me that while there's you know kind of an explosion of of the middle class there, and and they're the 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 middle class in India is is basically the size of the population of the United States. You know, something like 300 million people, although, you know, that's relative, obviously, to the, to the Indian economy. And, of course, there's, you know, everybody wants to go buy, a, you know, a car of some kind or another, whether it be a Tata or a Mercedes-Benz, you know. Yes. Uh, but, but it seems to me that the market there, there's a very strong potential for a large two- and three-wheeled uh, EV market there, you know. Um, I could see, for example, we'll talk about your motors in a minute. I could see that 750 uh, or uh, 1500 watt motor being kind of a nice application in a, uh, you know, in a, in a tuk tuk, uh, you know, type of uh, type of vehicle, as well as you know, um, motor scooters and motorbikes and things like that. <laughs>